very much and uh, as i pointed earlier i'm very happy to be a part of this particular program uh, so every child uh, has a great association with the great grandparents compared to the father or mother because uh, the grandparents comes with a significant amount of love and affection without any expectation and also have a wide variety of knowledge uh, which uh, may be the parents may not have because the grandparents are already uh, well settled in their life and also they have a uh, new philosophy for their existence because if you see maslow's hierarchy of needs that we move from one step to another uh, the last step of self actualization uh, is a very uh, long process uh, some people may achieve it uh, at some point of time but it takes a longer time but the grandparents at one point of time uh, they the self actualization through the motivating uh, the young uh, grandchildren because they are very open uh, they are uh, not they are uh, willing to share their knowledge so in this case as a grandchild i had a great opportunity to have association with my grandparents from my mother side as well as my father side and uh, especially my father's mother uh, is a great feminist she never went to school never did anything but she is a great feminist i have ever seen uh, because she lost her husband at the very uh, prime age with two children young children and she was a very rich person she held uh, several acres of land Uh, in a place called Colly Hills, had tea estate, had coffee estate, cardamom estate, but due to the bad activities of my grandfather, everything was on a loss. And at one point of time, my grandmother was reduced to a coolie in the same estate when which she was uh, the main sahib. So from jamindar she became a jamadar. but she never lost resilience she worked in the farms she educated my father and my father completed an advanced diploma in commercial practice from a central government polytechnic in chennai and many times uh, he used to suffer in the uh, canteen or the hostel that uh, grandmother would not be able to pay the fee so he would be sent out but at the same time after some time she would send money so her thirst to make her father my father educated was something uh, very great and she continued to her work in the farm lands and she will do any odd jobs and also she has a great uh, marketing and sales ability any small thing also she will try to do it so i had an opportunity to always travel with her when i was a child she used to uh, do a milk business she had some three buffaloes and she does everything alone she never have anybody with her and uh, we used to just stand only like uh, mostly observing she will not allow us to work because she is telling uh, no no you are an officer's uh, children uh, you should only watch but not uh, do that but i will take care don't worry so um, once uh, my grandmother she uh, sold broomsticks in the town where my father is an officer uh, there so some of uh, the colleagues uh, told my uh, father that uh, we saw your mother selling broomsticks my father felt little embarrassed and uh, he politely went to uh, my grandmother and told mm, i heard this uh, thing is it true then my grandmother retaliated yes it is me what is your problem then my father told see i am an officer in this town and i have some respect if you do this business uh, it will impact on my image that you, uh, i am letting my mother to do odd jobs in spite i am being an officer and earning a good money um, i don't like your job my grandmother retaliated i also don't like your officer job can you please resign for me and come with me and do some agriculture work so this is the kind of thing that she told the dignity of the labor doesn't lie in the 
the profession which hold officer or broomstick seller or anything that any job is the same only thing that you need passion for that particular job and do it with sincerity honesty and commitment and you will be successful in life so you take care of your job and i will take care of my job and until death you will be surprised to know never a day she asked a single penny from my father and she always gives the same amount of money she used to give when during he was in the college she continued until death and she died at the age of around 90 i believe and uh, that is the resilient elderly i have seen in my personal life and what more motivation as a child i can get uh, because uh, you, you may go to harvard you may go to el uh, business school but the kind of selling and marketing i learned from my grandmother how to sell things so when i became an academic too because my father didn't want me to be an entrepreneur um, so he, he told you uh, you are good at academics do that but still i am an academic entrepreneur i become an entrepreneur and then uh, i become a social entrepreneur i started through ngos and i started doing things and uh, very recently now i have become more uh, uh, entrepreneur myself even i have started uh, food and hotel industry hospitality industry which uh, i am doing as a um, activity which will help to grow my institute because i have a philosophy of subsidized education i don't i want everybody to study criminology and other sciences so suppose we are having a very high fee structure uh, like uh, madam told nicfs all have become more uh, uh, institute with uh, more heavy fees i don't want to do with the my institute so but we need to sustain and do things because we have also uh, on office assistant professor salary so that way i have created uh, another food and hospitality company which will be profit oriented and that money will be coming inside my institute and uh, my company which is an education company which will grow so here we have the concept of having the elderly in every uh, stage like uh, uh, in in terms of uh, professors for example like in the us there is no retirement of uh, professors in australia in many countries like that so only uh, when the university feels that you need to uh, go then only uh, they may say like so, so there was one uh, professor who was 99 years old and he was coming and the university told sir please resign because that you are suffering we cannot talk. see you suffering otherwise you can continue until your death so that kind of thing is there but unfortunately in india uh, a professor retires at 60 is a very very bad thing which i am seeing that we should continue because the professor's knowledge grows more and more and more when when they become ripe fruit and they 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 become something different i always feel but uh, after reaching 60 then immediately you tell them get out is a very absurd thing which i am seeing in india so uh, probably we are more into administrative aspect that's why people think that after 60 you are not that good administrator maybe uh, some of the mental faculties and others may subside little but the knowledge and the wisdom a senior person possess cannot be measured in any quantity i always uh, believe believe that, that the more you are getting more older your knowledge your systems everything work and also uh, the kind of forgiveness which uh, elderly have uh, young people do not have in fact i would uh, see that the emotional level uh, of uh, youngsters is reducing day by day and uh, 2k kids uh, with the use of the mobile and the internet and i'm finding that they are more uh, cutthroat kind of people they are developing and they have less uh, value system honesty is not there commitment is not there politeness is not there all these things now uh, lies in the hands of the elderly people to guide them properly uh, because I'm, I'm seeing that the western nations have made us more uh, individual nations like uh, we are becoming more individual and that uh, concept which may work or may not work like we have to see and, and madam told that she waited until uh, the growth of uh, herself and the parents they died and then the children went and she now feels that she is not having that uh, kind of thing what she should do after retiring from postal service so that is kind of vacuum is now happening because we are always equipped with uh, something to do especially taking care of the family but once the children are grown then we find that we have a vacuum what to do now 
because we dedicated our life to the children. But in the US and other countries, I see that everybody, whether they are uh, 40 years, 60 years, they have some kind of occasion. And the age is an irrelevant factor in uh, the US, which I have seen. I went to one university for an interview. And during the interview time, they uh, told me to look after some real estate properties because in case if you are selected, you are going to do that. So they um, made me associated with one uh, madam called Alice. And I was surprised by the kind of the dignity and the resilience that madam had. And she is around 67 years old. She drove the car for me for 10 properties herself. And uh, I was also amazed to see that all the employees working in her office are also the same 65 year old. And if you call them madam, if you call them um, auntie, grandma, they'll be very angry. You should always call Alice. Yes, Alice, please tell me. So Alice took care of me for that particular three days, 10 properties. Then I, um, I delineated one property about, of that. And uh, I told this property I like, uh, can I have it? Then Alice uh, told me, uh, you can choose some other thing. Why are you choosing this? Um, Alice, this is looking good. Uh, so t she told me it's looking good yes but i would show you some other thing then i asked alice why you are not doing the, this for me and alice told no this is my mother-in-law's property <laughs> so you, you know that uh, this um, mother-in-law daughter-in-law problem is not only in india <laughs> there also it's there <laughs> so she symbolically told me not this one and she told that i'll show you some other property so that uh, particular three days we, with her in the travel, she drove the car and she uh, showed the place and explained everything, uh, made me to think a lot that why in India that uh, after the age of 60, the retirement and everything, we are cocooned in one place. Why are we not uh, giving the kind of uh, knowledge or the work to the society? Why we are always thinking, yeah, we, we have become senior citizen. Actually, the word senior citizen, I believe should not be there. What, what is the word senior? Why, if you are senior citizen, you may come with the privileges. But, but the point here is that the moment we become senior citizen, I think the other uh, people, they think that uh, they are old. They are old. What do they know about uh, things which we are doing? See, in fact, the new age uh, children, which we call digital natives, are very, very smart in using mobile phones. But I find that uh, uh, that is not sufficient. You may be... Uh, using a technology but uh, using technology doesn't make you scholarly person or a knowledgeable person or a person with wisdom and that way uh, I sincerely believe that the resilient elderly of the country they have a duty to help these youngsters because India is aging in a different way the coming years another five years you'll find that more people are in the adolescent and the above age of 25 and elderly people are comparatively going to be less in the country. When you go to the Japanese, large number of elderly people are going to happen in that country. But in India, that is going to be the reverse. We are going to be a country of young people. But what is the point of being a country of young people who doesn't possess emotions, whose emotional quotient is very, very less. In my company, I have fired four people who are digital natives or 2K kids because they do not know how to fit in a Team. They do not know how to work in an organization, which is like they come with a kind of arrogance. They come, come with a I know it all attitude. So all these things, I believe some there, there is a gap between themselves and their grandparents, which fortunately I had an opportunity to interact with my grandmother and my grandfather. In fact, my mother's grandfather was a great role model for me in many things, the kind of resilience he always possessed. Like a, if you want to see his daughter, he will travel uh, five hours and uh, with a jackfruit, he will just appear. No phone calls, no letters, nothing like that. So the kind of love and affection one can show to the children that I have seen from him only. But nowadays we are um, having more interaction online or mobile. So we are all, uh, not having that kind of a physical human interaction, which I think uh, Madam already told that uh, we should meet physically. So this is a, a technology which is only a medium and not the end itself. So I, I believe that uh, elderly people can be 
utilizing the technology but still some kind of a physical meeting uh, is required and uh, um, many things are happening online in fact uh, more victimization is happening online by elderly people are vic becoming victims as a cyber criminologist i believe that it is also my duty to support the elderly people and uh, earlier ranjit organized one program and i spoke on the strategies for preventing uh, elderly cyber crime victimization so i hope that uh, this particular uh, workshop will only be a kind of a opening and is still more uh, to happen uh, and uh, i also um, uh, give a kind of a solution to certain problems related to cyber elderly uh, who are facing uh, cyber crimes or how to move in the cyber space and we can join hands together and i welcome sci-fi solutions sifs and uh, other organizations which have organized this uh, particular program and especially um, professor subra sanyal is also our honorary professor of uh, psychology uh, criminal psychology and uh, once again i take this opportunity to thank the organizers for inviting me to talk on this particular forum and i hope that we will have all uh, a fruitful discussion and uh, some uh, form of agenda or some form of uh, conceptual evolution will happen in this workshop and uh, uh, thank you very much